Welcome, everybody. We're glad to see you. Um, could you join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, our first item of business will be to the consent agenda. Uh, there are six items tonight on the consent agenda. Uh, the first two, approval of minutes from February 24th, 2016, regular session, and B, warrants, G416, R216, L32, L33, and L34. Can we have a motion on that? Mrs. Carroll. So moved. And second, Mrs. Bonish. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, That'll be six unanimous, Kim. Uh, the next one warrants payroll 3 2 2016. Mrs. Burns. So moved. Mrs. Broussard. Second. All those in favor? One, two, three, four in favor. Um, two abstain, Mrs. Carroll and Mrs. Kane. And we have warrants CB 11. Um, Mr. Mulis. Motion to approve warrants CB 11. Second. Mrs. Carroll. Okay, we have, we'll have, I forgot Mr. is not here. Um, all right, all those in favor, did we do that? Yeah. That will be five in favor, one abstain, Mrs. Burns. And warrants, uh, SPED 17 and SPED 18. We had Mrs. Bonish. Second, Mrs. Carroll. All those in favor? Okay, we have um, five in favor, one abstain, Mrs. Burns and warrants FS20 FS and FS21. Mrs. Burns. So moved. And second, Mrs. Broussard. All those in favor? So we have five in favor, one abstain, Mrs. Carroll. Okay. We did it, thank you. Okay, um, our next item of business is always a delight. We have our student school committee representative, Dina. Thank you for waiting. Good to see you. <laughs> She's so good. Hello, everyone. Big crowd today. Um, so today's report is to update you all on the recent events that are coming and have took place. So obviously, this Friday is the talent show, a night filled with unique talents and fun. And it supports the science club and the class of 2018. Tomorrow, uh, March 10th through March 12th is the w WHS DECA trip to Boston for the state's competition. And then on March 18 is March Appella, the eighth annual March Appella. And a week after that is obviously English MCAS. What a delight, it has crept on us. <laughs> and then lastly, um, next week, the entire week is Foreign Language Week. So every morning announcement will be, obviously we'll do our morning announcements and they will be in a different language. And um, the World Cultures Club is also thinking of um, having, before the morning announcements, having a song in a foreign language. Obviously school appropriate. So it could be a Spanish song, uh, Italian song, you know, showing how multicultural we are. Nice. Um, and also, in foreign language classes, what they're making us do as part of our grade is um, we have to do a reflection on any experience with culture or um, the language like I'm learning Spanish, any Spanish culture or Spanish language like I've experienced out of school, I have to make a reflection out of, like I go to a restaurant, experience a festival, stuff like that. Um, and that is part of our community grade particip uh, participation. And I like that, that, you know, they're making us, they're making us do it, but it's like, it makes us experience the language as we learn it. So it's not like in the classroom, it's in the outside world too. Um, and lastly, I have obviously my quote to end my report which is for why learn foreign languages. And the quote is from Nelson Mandela. If you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. Very nice. 
That was very good. I hope you're keeping a little booklet of your quotes. We should do at the end of the year, put it together. <laughs> I agree. Really? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Yes. Seriously, yes. Okay. I'll put very them nice. Online. Thank, Thank you. you. I know. Any questions or comments? No? You're so good. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Glad to have you. Yep. All right. Our next item of business, superintendent's report. Can I go first from now on? That's too oh. hard and apt to follow. <laughs> I know. It's true. Uh, just a few things to update you on uh, mostly dates, which March, the other dates, March 17th is an early childhood elementary parent conferences, so that's an early release day. Uh, March 25th is Good Friday, and it's a school holiday, so the schools will be closed on the 25th. And put this on your calendar, coming up April 28th, the STEM Fair, and that's, okay. as you know, at the middle school cafeteria. Starts at 4 p.m. Uh, also wanted to let you know that Neil is working on scheduling the parent meeting. I think he's going to do it on the 23rd, which is the, time, the date of your school committee meeting, but I think before the school committee meeting, so that if mm -hmm. folks wanted to attend, you would have that ability. And it takes for a little bit of a long night, but you don't have to come out multiple nights. So that's what nice. we're I know you'd asked us to move it up yes. earlier than, than April. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. Yep, that's my report. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, our next item of business is old business. Um, Superintendent DeLay. Yes, we are very pleased to have with us this evening Holly Banishevitz, who is our elementary literacy specialist. Uh, but we also have, I should mention too, uh, could you be further back there, is Lisa <laughs> King. And Jess Drasnick, principal of Shawshank, principal of the Woburn Street School. As you know, we're implementing foundations this year at grade one, and we're beginning the process of actually planning for implementation in grade two using Title I money, and you all have in the budget for next year to, in, to uh, implement at grade K. So I thought it would be helpful for you to hear from folks just how well, and I'm hearing great things, so just hear from them how well the implementation of foundations is, is going here in Wilmington Public Schools. So I'll turn it over to Holly. Great, so I have a, a brief update, but an exciting update for you. Um, so this year, like um, Ms. Sly said, we have um, brought foundations into first grade. And really, teachers have been wowed by the progress they're seeing with their students. And the first grade teachers remark constantly about the difference in the level of skill this year's first grade has, has is as compared to previous years. Um, and they've seen some improvements in very specific areas as well. That phonological awareness piece, phonemic awareness, sound mastery, phonics, vocabulary, sight words, and I was in a classroom today observing foundations and the letter formation is improving already. And um, we know that in first grade, a lot of times that can be an area of weakness for students, but foundations teaches that letter formation piece. Um, the other really exciting piece is that in foundations, at the end of every unit, students are given a unit assessment. And the expectation from foundations is that 80% of students will receive an 80% or higher on that unit assessment in order to consider that being mastery for the class and moving on to the next unit. And the great news is that in all of our classrooms, students are meeting that benchmark. 80% of students are meeting that 80% benchmark and teachers are able to continue moving sequentially through the program. So that's incredible. Those are really great results. And teachers, have remarked that um, skills have definitely increased in comparison to other years and that they love the multi-sensory approach of this program. Students are standing and sky writing, they're manipulating tiles, they're coming up to the board and they're writing. So it's a very, um, it, you know, fast paced in a good way. The, the program holds their attention and moves from one activity to the next, which is a really nice component. There's also a lot of visuals for students that they can refer to. Um, and I saw a student today leading the class in some drill, and he got stuck for a brief second. He knew just what to do. He looked right at the poster and came right back, and he was able to tell the students what, what they needed to do. So that was great that they're using those visuals. Um, 
And then, you know, the skills are taught through explicit modeling, and the teachers love that, that they can explicitly model it and then provide ample time for students to practice the skills that were just taught. And word is spreading. So the kindergarten teachers and the second grade teachers are beyond excited to have this program next year. And I think what's most exciting for everyone, and I think Jeff and Lisa would agree, is that looking two years out, when we have foundations going in every grade and seeing the increase in skills that our students are going to have. So, did you want to add anything? I mean, I think that, um, can I just come to my you should, Yeah, sure. <laughs> the folks at home can <laughs> hear you. <laughs> so, I mean, I, when we were talking about this before, when I, and I think I can speak for Jeff too, when we walk through the classrooms, the handwriting mm -hmm. that we see that compared to years before because they're actually practicing and I think I think that's huge I think that's a skill that over the past couple of years the children have had difficulty with by the time they get to third grade um, and another thing and I can't I don't know if it's a direct correlation or not but I know that our recent benchmark data for the winter um, reading CBM where the children begin to read uh, and they it works on fluency I mean we've increased 11 percent from last year so I can't say that that's in a direct impact to foundations, but I think that it is a part of it with the phonics, so. Certainly. Yeah. And another piece that the teachers love this year, and it's, it's only for this year, the first year of implementation, is the coaching that comes along with foundations. So uh, foundations is part of Wilson, and they have Wilson coaches that come in, and they come to each building four times a year, and they do a combination of modeling and observing and providing feedback, and teachers have found that to be really valuable. So I know the kindergarten and second grade teachers will uh, really appreciate that next year. Um, are there any questions about foundations? Yeah. What happens to the other 20 percent? Great question. <coughs> so, I think it'll like, yeah. that's my question. <laughs> so there's what's called a double dose lesson. Mm -hmm. And so depending on that student's situation, that could happen in a variety of ways. The double dose could happen with the classroom teacher themselves. Or if it's part of their uh, ed plan, they would get it with the special ed teacher. Or if they receive reading services, they could get that double dose with the reading uh, specialist. So in one way, shape, or form, those students who didn't meet that 80% benchmark are getting a double dose lesson and until they meet that benchmark. Have you seen them catching up? Oh yeah, they all, they do, yeah. yeah. And then, but it's a really great indicator for students who are consistently not meeting that benchmark. It's a good flag for us to say, we need to investigate more and see if there's any underlying issues right. here. Um, so it's been a really good indicator for us but also to see that most students are really meeting that benchmark, and if they don't, they do relatively soon. Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Anything? Any other questions? Great. Well, thank oh, you, and I know good, teachers are you. so appreciative of um, your support in adopting foundation. So thank you. Okay. Thank you tonight. That's thank you. Good. Lisa, I think it's your turn. <laughs> yes, our next pre presentation is uh, on Envisions 2.0 implementation. And Lisa Ippolito, who is our elementary math specialist, is going to take you through that. But we have some other folks here as mm -hmm. well. We certainly have principals. And uh, Phyllis Green is here. She is a special education teacher at the West Intermediate School who is absolutely in love with this program. And uh, she was with us at the Federation workshop and raving about the program. And I said, come to the school committee meeting and share your thoughts, because I think it's a really great perspective that she has as a special educator on how valuable this program is. And as a superintendent, I will say that nothing makes me happier than to go into special education classes whether they be sub-separate classes, inclusion classes, and general ed classes, and see that the teachers are teaching the same thing, using the same materials, paced at the same pace, and covering the same thing. And in the special ed, they're, they're really using their, their intervention tools to help those students. So uh, that's my observation, but I'll turn it over to yeah. Lisa. Uh, and Lisa Murphy is also here in a, that capacity as well. She was a pilot teacher. So, okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna give you an overview of where we're at right now and feedback that I've received from all the different constituents. And um, I know it's in your packet. Um, so this is feedback, and this is like 
a tiny portion of the feedback that I've received from teachers about the program. Of course, people were at the beginning of the year like, oh my gosh, this is a big shift for us and what's going to happen? Um, but we were very fortunate that we had a lot of professional development at the end of last year, uh, merged into the summer PD, and um, we just finished our final PD on Friday. So just the Envisions training from Envisions themselves was 16 hours, um, and then I provided close to 12 additional hours of additional PD for teachers where we did, some of it was a collaborative work for team specific um, activities, but basically the teachers have fallen in love with the program and they love that all that it has to offer. They love the consistency of the program, the rollout of the program, and most of all, um, the majority of teachers will talk about the math vocabulary and how strong it is and how that contributes to students' writing in math, as well as um, their capabilities to provide the differentiated instruction within their classroom. So we're very proud of their efforts, for sure. Lisa, could I, I'm going to interrupt you, I'm sorry. Oh, sure. What grade level, were the, do you know offhand what grade level those teachers were from? This is, um, actually, I know that the first one is from fifth grade, because um, actually we had several teachers who sent a survey to their entire class, to the parents in their class, um, about the program. So they shared those results with me. Um, oh, this is a teacher feedback one, sorry. That's the next slide, the parent one. I'm, um, <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. It's I'm on sorry, my mind. I don't mean to put you up. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, so the teacher feedback, this came from a survey or several surveys that we rolled out prior to every professional development because we really wanted to cater it to the Wilmington teachers and not just have like a canned professional development. Um, and so these are responses off of those surveys. And the other thing I was going to ask you for that professional development, did they everyone have to take it and did everyone take it? For the CIT day professional mm -hmm. development, yes, everyone was required to take it. Okay. Um, classroom teachers, special educators, um, some aides chose to, instructional aides chose to join us as well. Uh, we try to keep it as inclusive as possible. Mm -hmm. And for the first couple of sessions, speech language pathologists came um, and they did some great extension work around um, math vocabulary that they would then utilize with their students they were servicing. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Okay, this is the parent feedback. <laughs> and again, this is a small dose of some of the feedback. Um, I try to take a smattering of a scale of like, we love it too, oh, well, there's this thing, there's one here about the online game that they found was tedious, what have you. Um, but along these lines as well, um, I've tried as much as possible to piggyback on the PAC meetings at the elementary level and do what we term the parent uh, cafe series. So I just did um, another one last night for the Shawshine West PAC. Um, and I always love those because you get to be really intimate with the parents and answer some you know, thought-provoking questions that they might have. Um, and one thing I loved about last night's, I'll just use that example, there was a mom and she couldn't stay for the whole thing and she's like, can I just talk to you for a quick second? You know, and always I'm like, okay, I'm ready to answer your question. She said, I just want to say, you know, as a group of parents that we feel like we've grown with this program along with the students and I'm amazed at all the math work my students can do. So, um, and I try to share with as, much, as many staff members as possible because I just felt like, you know, um, like she said, we're growing together with this program and it's paying off for the students, which is most important. So I decided to do a little dipstick um, student survey. And so the survey was sent out to the pilot teachers. Um, and so the sampling, and it changed, the numbers changed what's in your packet because another teacher at the last minute after I already sent this in, sent me some data, so I wanted to include it. But this includes two kindergarten classrooms, one first, one second, one third, one fourth, one fifth. Um, so the question was, do you like math? And you can see up there, we have to work in that 2%. <laughs> um, and the categories were love it, like it, or not so much. Um, so I was pretty impressed by that. That was actually a little bit surprising for me um, to hear, but I, I loved receiving that data, especially from the students, to kind of see their feelings on things. And then the next question was, do you like the math videos? Um, and the students are really jazzed by those videos. They get engaged, um, anyone who's done like a walkthrough through the classroom, and the video starts like zoom, laser focused. You can ask them any question and they've got it. So that's, that's great. Um, do you like the math lessons? Um, and so, you know, we look at this and we say, okay, we have 7% and what could that be about? Maybe there needs to more, be more differentiated instruction in those rooms. It is our first year. 
Um, so it's, I like having that on our radar, you know, to think about all students. Um, do you like the math centers? And they enjoy them very much. And you'll see as we move further in the presentation, this year we have what are called um, non-negotiables. So we try to create a math block template to create consistency classroom to classroom, grade to grade. And at the same time, we didn't want to overwhelm the teachers with here's a program, do every single piece of it, because there's a lot. Um, and so for the centers this year, we were just focusing on these very specific center activities. Um, and you, as you see as we go in the presentation, some teachers have now ventured on to the negotiable pieces. Um, so I'm wondering what those numbers will look like next year when they're using all of the center activities. And then I just wanted to try this question to see, and this sampling's smaller because it did not include kindergarten. And it's like, how do you think you do on your homework? And they're pretty confident in how they're doing on their homework, which I thought that was just adorable. <laughs> I love that answer. Um, so they feel like they're doing, you know, awesome to pretty good. So we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, and you've seen this before. This is based the basic three-step template that we use, K to 5. Um, and the minutes on learning for kindergarten is between 45 minutes and 60 minutes of math. Grades 1 to 3 is 60 minutes, and grades 4 and 5 is 90 minutes. And this is just the cover sheet of the survey. Um, and we had Pearson send out the survey because I, I, I like to see things without blinders on, right? Because sometimes when it's too close to you, you maybe you can't see gaps. And so I wanted um, Pearson to send the survey, and then they sent me the completed results at the end. So the data you're going to see from this point forward came directly to me from, from Pearson. Um, Okay, so these are the centers that are um, non-negotiables this year. Um, and the survey showed that 80% of the staff who took the survey used these centers. 80% um, might seem like, oh, that's not 100% and it's a non-negotiable. But the survey was sent out to all educators who use Envision, so speech therapists, um, special educators who might not get to these on a daily basis because they're doing more direct instruction. So I felt like that number was actually very, very good. Um, I'm happy to see it. Um, let's see. OK. And now, this is interesting because these are the non-negotiable pieces. I mean, these are the negotiable pieces. And so this is a problem-solving reading mat where you can teach reading, science, social studies, and math all off of this mat. And these mats were developed by the DK book series. Those are the books mm -hmm. the kids love. They're about castles or frogs or what have you. And it, piques their interest, and it was interesting because a lot of the kids, when they see the DK up in the right-hand corner, they're like, I love those books, and zoom, instantly you have that interest level that you're looking for. Um, so on these, um, there's interesting facts about high interest topics, and then there's an activity to do afterwards, and it, there's also a project that comes in the book that goes with it that um, teachers can extend for their more advanced learners. This is the math science prog project, again, a negotiable piece this year, and we had 40% of our um, staff already utilizing it. Um, lots of teachers have created a math science journal where the students will do the research and use technology to research. Um, and the math standards for the program are aligned to the next generation science standards, so that's a, a nice fit for us, mm -hmm. too. So it's kind of a two for one. And of course, my favorite STEM relation throughout. <laughs> Just saying. Um, okay, the math tools, these are online virtual manipulatives, and the teachers got a significant amount of training on this piece on Friday, and already in the classrooms, teachers were like, oh, I used the bar models, oh, they were so great, we made a raise, the kids are making a raise on their tablets, and so 50% of the staff are already using the math tools. Um, the game center, this is, um, this was where that one comment about the rocket game being a little tedious, these are um, games just regular online math games, and we have access from grades K to six, all students, regardless of their grade. So when kids are at home, they can go into any grade level, play any game. It's just meant to be fun and reinforce skills or give a challenge or um, go back and review. And then Anytime Math, and this number is amazing, because again, these are negotiables this year. The Daily Common Core Review, 82% of our teachers use those from morning work. And these mirror what we had last year, which were called daily math practice pages. And so basically, this is the spiral piece 
that focuses on skills the students already learned um, to keep them kind of engaged in that work that they've already had around math. And then today's challenge is just what it says. It's a challenging, they're given one piece of data and they work with that piece of data for five days. And then at the end of those five days, they create their own problems and then share it out with the rest of the class. So it becomes collaborative and interactive. Um, and 31% um, of our staff are using those with the students already. Uh, animated glossary, 54% of um, the students and staff are using them. And basically, it, it's what it says. It's if they are confused on a term, they can click on it. It gives a definition, but it also has a little speaker, so it'll read it to the students. And then if they're still confused, there's another button, and it does like a little animation, like a little video for them to reinforce um, the math vocabulary. Oh, sorry. There's a little example of what the video would look like. And support for homeschool, like I said, um, done the series of parent cafes. Um, got some great results off, off those um, cafes and lots of comments from parents. I've met with parents one-on-one -on -one if they needed that support. Um, and the teachers have been extraordinary. They really have been meeting with parents, making sure they're sending home the homeschool connection letter. Um, and at the beginning of the year, um, we mail merged a letter for every single student, grades K through five, with the student's username and password and the complete directions of how to use the, um, log on to the website. And then on the Wilmington Public Schools elementary math website, um, there's a whole folder that says parents and it's all these how-to guides in case they needed them to support. The Another Look video series tied directly into the student's homework. Um, and a lot of parents said this is a godsend. For example, if the homework includes a bar model, and we didn't learn with bar models. They're able to go on and um, get a little helpful video about um, the homework ahead of them. And 70% of the students and families use um, the Another Look videos. And then Practice Buddy is offered grades three through six. And it's basically a virtual tutor. Um, and our <coughs> three to f um, grades three to five, those teachers have really started engaging in Practice Buddy, like I'd say January. Um, and it's a great program because um, some teachers offer it for homework, and if students are confused, they have three options. One option is help me solve this, and it will take them without giving them the answer, like step by step, like what is the numerator, and they put it in the box. Okay, what is the numerator of the other fraction you put in the box? We add those together. This is, this is the answer to the numerator. I mean, it walks them through. Or if they're struggling even more, it's view an example, and it plays a video and plays out the whole um, problem for them so they can see it start to finish in real time. And then there's a learning animation video which will um, take them through and pause and they'll plug in answers and when they finish it pops them out into another problem and they try it and if they're unsuccessful it moves them backwards to a point of success and then builds them back forward. And it also sends all of the online tools send a report to the teacher to their dashboard saying this student's struggling, they need assistance with these standards, or this student is thriving, let's give them some enrichment in these standards. Um, so it's an intuitive feature in the program. Oh, I'm done. I could just go on and on. Sorry. You are so enthusiastic about math. I just love what Quite I do. Quite opposite myself. But <laughs> Excellent. Did you, any, just, did you want to share um, some of your... That would be great. Yeah. Can you hear me? Or? They can't hear you at they, home. At they have home, to go to one of the microphones. Like the, yeah. the folks at home can't. Oh, does she want to sit at the seat here? Can you hear me? Yeah, you'd yeah. be fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, just to add, I, I agree with everything that you said. Um, just a few things that are, I think are pretty amazing. Many of you might be aware that all teachers in Massachusetts um, over, say, the last year and the next year uh, who want to renew their licenses have to take a um, sheltered English instruction course. Uh, I am, I've just started, I'm in my fourth week, and we're talking a lot about uh, the importance of vocabulary. And I'm sitting there feeling like, well, okay, English language learners, but this is wonderful for everyone. And we were asked to bring in one of our textbooks, and I brought in an Envisions textbook. And we were having a lesson on 
taking a content objective and making it into a language objective for English language learners. And I would say, oh, look at this. This is great. Because Envision's textbooks have this little gray um, box with every lesson that is an ELL lesson for the teacher. Then I realized that the other day, actually, at the training, yeah. that um, Envision's the Envisions ELL advisor is a man named Jim Cummins, who is a theorist we are studying in this SEI course. So I was a rock star at this course the other day because, <laughs> anyway, that, that is wonderful. And the, the point I want to make about vocabulary, again, it's important for English language learners, but as you know, a lot of students in uh, special education have real challenges in learning language or expressing language. Um, most of my inclusion students do. And I am hearing my students who have typically failed math all along, my fourth and fifth grade <coughs> students, I'm hearing them using this math vocabulary in their little side conversations with each other. <laughs> It, it's, it's unbelievable to me. And um, this one uh, success story that I feel we have um, in the fifth grade this year, uh, I'm working with a student who, uh, for the last several years, teachers have wondered if this student should be in a language-based classroom versus an inclusion classroom. This student is getting an A minus in math this on Friday. I, I'm getting like little, yeah. <laughs> little goosebumps because he has made so much progress. And for him, this program is really what I, I've told Lisa, therapeutic. Mm -hmm. He's the one, he loves the structure. He knows exactly where to find every part of every lesson and he looks for it. If he's confused about a concept, he knows that down the bottom, he can find the reteach page and go there. And he knows that he can go home and ask his mom or dad to sit at night and re-watch the videos with him that he watched during the day. It's pretty incredible. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That was very nice. Do we have any other? Anybody else? What? Oh, okay. <laughs> I do. I do have to say, I was at the West uh, this week, and uh, I didn't realize that they had covered some of this, the math. Was it the math tools at the Friday training, which yes. explained explains a lot now? But I was in uh, Trish Moulton's classroom, oh, and yeah. she was showing them how to use the computer-based sort of virtual manipulatives. They had them on their desks as well. It was the it was the bar, the bar graphs models. with the frac the bar mm -hmm. models with the fractions. And they were there, and they were looking at them. But the, then, when they saw them on the computer, and that they could do it at home on the computer, I don't think they were as excited about the manipulatives on their desk. <laughs> right. But what they said was, "Why can't we get the Chromebook so we could do this on the Chromebook?" <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to see uh, increasing demand. <laughs> I didn't. I did. I think they set me up because yeah. I said it about three times while I was in the classroom. But it is really amazing to watch all the different ways that we're able to engage students in math with this program. I'm happy to see all the aspects as when it was presented to us last year. You know, I, we needed that structure, and I'm glad it, it was found in a, a product um, of this sort. It's a Pearson product, so I'm a little, you know, so I'm, so I'm very happy that I was wrong. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> After the product thing, I'm damaged for life, I think. But um, I just had a quick a quick question. I, I ideally, and I know that this will come as this rolls out to the other grades. I would like to see the the uh, teacher engagement in in the other areas that this program does offer. And I'm sure I, I I don't think I I don't think I'm concerned. I'm sure that we will see that as as that knowledge and that um, understanding of the, of all the aspects of it come to fruition and more comfortable doing it. I do have a quick question. It's more curiosity based than anything else. In the uh, the summary, which topics would you like covered in your next e Envision Math? There's like 27.8% other. Do you have any idea as to what that might look like? I, I was just curious to see um, as to where the expansion perhaps on this 
um, sure. curriculum could That came take more us. around with like Wilmington Public Schools. I don't want to say issues. Issues is the wrong word. Like things that had nothing to do with Pearson per se or oh. Envisions per se. Okay. And so um, was it the measuring tool? What they? Um, no, it's more like oh well, the assessments are a little long. Can we shorten them? That was like the main thing. Oh, we okay. are. I have a math curriculum team, and we're working on that process in a oh, very thoughtful way. Um, so that's what that 27% was there. And that screenshot is only meant to be like a cover sheet, really, because there's all these comments. Right. Like I was just curious the, with the, no, I like the, the comments question. because, I mean, I'm very, very, I'm very happy that there's such success in all the, the classrooms mm -hmm. and that it's, a, it's consistent across it all is. boards. <laughs> yes. And the teachers work really hard, so yeah. it's just you know, a tribute to them and all their hard work and you know, wanting best for the kids. Absolutely. That's all we can ask for. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I had a couple oh, of questions. One sure. is the animated glossary. Does that mean they um, they have computers in the classroom? Do they just have one, or are the kids using um, individual depends computers? Depends on the building. Some buildings have tablets, so they can use their tablets okay. to um, go onto the site. Other buildings have the Chromebooks. Um, and I believe in every single building, every single teacher has time allotted to them in the computer lab mm -hmm. to bring their whole class down. Um, and in some buildings, I know teachers take multiple spots in the computer lab when possible. Okay. Yeah. And then this is just from my personal experience. Sure. I don't want to rain on this parade, but I have a que <laughs> question. I'm going to put it. You never rain, Peggy. I'm you never rain. <laughs> I'm just going to put this delicately because if I don't bring it up, I'm going to be in trouble. Okay. Um, how do you, in students who did really well in math before and were very happy, and have come and are kicking and screaming on this particular type of math, how are we encouraging those students to eventually get to a part where they don't hate math every day and aren't upset and get off the bus and say, you voted for that? Oh, well. <laughs> who can we be talking about? <laughs> from that? I don't know anybody and that would be. Um, well, and finally, I think she's doing really well. She's getting good grades. She and is. She's, but she, the I will love just is, say, the love is gone. I will just I say it. that that certain someone we may be talking about <laughs> is, seems very different in her classroom setting than what she's reporting when she gets off of the school well, bus. I'm just saying. Know. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> just saying on a hunch. They know who they they know who the one is to go to and get sympathy from. I'm sure. Yes, <laughs> yes, and rightfully so. And rightfully so. <laughs> okay, so but there I know there are there are some kids this isn't quite working with like any program. What do we do extra for those, or do we do extra? What do we do for those we kids? We need to find like true differentiated instruction. We yeah. find their interest level, their readiness level. Um, and focus on those to engage them mm. in the work. And, and as the classroom teachers um, develop more and more skill around differentiated instruction, um, I think that comes in time. And, some, and we do have some teachers who are extremely skilled at that at this point in time. It's just, you know, just like with anything, um, different people come to the table with different knowledge. So our goal is always to make sure like I said, even when it was like 2% or 3% up there, that means right. something to me. Like, I want right. to figure out those children and what can we do to support them. Um, so at least well, they like it. Part of the issue, too, I had spoken to um, the superintendent about this. I think that when you're rolling out a program like this, the fourth graders up through third grade have mm -hmm. had one program, mm -hmm. one type of program. And all of a sudden, they're hit with this, and they don't have the benefit of what our first graders are getting. Mm -hmm. exactly. First, second, third, fourth. And I think it's harder. Mm -hmm for the fourth and fifth graders. True, I, I would 100% agree with that. And our data even, I don't wanna say um, shows that to a T, but it shows that trend. So like looking at our K-1 data, mm -hmm. their, their average, their percentile average uh, is a range between let's say like 85% and, and 100%. Um, whereas when you look at the fourth, fifth grade data, and this is where you can talk about scaling and all that, it's, it's a lower percentage, we'll just leave it yeah. there. But they're That's still learning. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the it's the vocabulary, mm -hmm. it's the conceptual understanding. Right. Um, the teachers have done a great job trying to bridge that and um, really differentiate in their classrooms to kind of fill those gaps for those students yeah. who need it. Um, they really the, do. I don't look at it as, as a teacher issue at all. Yeah, it's definitely a right. student issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is, is, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Go ahead, Ms. Is there more mentor, uh, mentoring going on with those teachers who are a little bit more skilled and, and familiar with differentiating um, instruction? Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand the, that it takes time to pick up that skill, mm -hmm. and I, but these kids don't have that time to go back and repeat that grade. You know, that was kind of, is that still ongoing? Or how is that, how does that like, look in this right. program? And so when I say that, I mean more like um, not repeating the grade, but we would well, do this for students regardless how do you of the. support those teachers mm -hmm. to help build their skills? Yeah. And yet support the students in the moment. Do you know yes. what I mean? So that their skills they're not missing out on learning those skills regardless as to how they learn them. Mm -hmm. Oh, the teachers do a great, oh. I think Jeff wants to add. Okay, something. go ahead, Jeff. Is that okay? Absolutely. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hi, um, Glad to have so you. So I was listening and actually um, had, had an experience that I think maybe um, can kind of, um, goes along with what you were kind of concerned about. So there's a um, student um, who a teacher asked me to, to kind of work with because he was, he was shutting down a lot at math time, didn't want to do math. Um, we knew he was a very bright student, he just, he didn't, he didn't want to do the math. So after having sat with him for a little while, I said, why, why do you not want to do the math? He's like, well, because I know the answer, I don't want to have to explain it. I said, well, yeah. so we wanted to tease that out a little bit. I said, mm -hmm. is it, you don't want to write down on paper how you solved it? Or, you know, is it okay if you just tell us how you solved it? He's like, oh, I don't mind saying how I solved it. He's like, I don't like the writing piece. So, mm -hmm. so I met with the teacher and I said, what if we just have him, you know, when you're giving him an activity or, or a lesson, um, just have him explain to you how he solved it. Because once he did that for me, he showed me one problem. He explained it three different ways, mm -hmm. very, very nicely, probably advanced mm -hmm. um, on how to solve that one problem. And so it's, it's kind of, it's also giving the teacher permission to say, it's okay if he doesn't write it down. As long as you know he knows how to do it, then that's what we're getting at. It's not, can he write it down with words? Can he draw a picture? It's, can he explain it? And I think it's, you know, some of that is, is letting teachers know it's okay if he doesn't write it down. As long as you know he understands it. And then, then we can talk about, well, if he takes a test and, all, you know, how's he going to show it? And, you know, but I think just getting them to, be comfortable with the program and say, okay, I'm not gonna have to write. If writing's an issue, well then don't write it down. Just write the answer and just tell us how you solved it. So I, I think just that. kind of getting that message out more to teachers, like it's okay. Um, and I think the teachers are, you know, they'll be receptive to that. I think Thank too, you. And, and Lisa's probably not going to um, toot her own horn because she wouldn't do that, but Lisa <laughs> spends an awful lot of time in classrooms with teachers. She makes herself available at every building on a regular basis. She w does walkthroughs with the principals, uh, helping them understand what it is that they should be looking for to support the teachers and help them. If a teacher is off pace, then she meets with the teachers and says, look, let's, you know, don't teach this, don't do this, but if you get these core concepts, the children are still going to progress. There's, there is a lot of support that, that she offers. It's amazing that she's in six buildings. Uh, and, and I think that's made a huge difference in their comfort level and brought them up to a level. And I think they also collaborate with each other a lot as well. Thank you for that. Okay. Yes, Mrs. Um, I like how the progress goes to the teacher yeah. so they can see where the children are and who's struggling. <laughs> I like that. I like that aspect of it. And I love the teacher meetings because a lot of our conversations are around that data. Mm -hmm and just having conversations about kids, and yeah. it's exciting. That it's exciting means, the growth the teachers have made. Yeah. And I like next time you come, I'll be able to report positive results. That's <laughs> right. In attitude. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Lisa. Any other questions? Great. Thank, you so thank, thank you so much. And thank you, um, Mr. Relay from the teachers. I mean, we were here this time last year, mm -hmm. and it was your support mm -hmm. of all of us to bring this program forward. and. Um, so heartfelt. It's not lost on us. We really, really appreciate it. So thank you to all of you as well. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, our next item of business is new business. Let's see. What some people have been waiting for, I think. They're, they're very good, very well behaved. Aren't they? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Superintendent, do I? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, with the um, 
impending departure of Mary Hood uh, from the district, who we obviously thank for her many years of service to Wilmington Public Schools. We set to the task of trying to identify somebody to take on this role that is slightly shifted from administrator of special education to, and I shouldn't say slightly, it certainly is a bigger role, to director of student support services so that we could pull all those things that are truly student support services under one umbrella. Uh, we have a lot of supports in those areas, a lot of great staff leading, for example, health services under Mrs. Crow and uh, ELL under Mrs. McDonald, so a lot of strong people in that uh, in that area. Um, but this role will bring all of those services together under one individual's guidance and leadership. Uh, we did post the position internally, and while we did have a number of people who certainly were qualified, uh, one individual who was not only qualified but also interested and enthusiastic. <laughs> to do the position is, uh, is, is Jen Mahan. So with your permission, I've shared with you her credentials. As you know, she's been in Wilmington Public Schools since uh, August of 2006 in a variety of roles. Prior to that, she was actually a classroom teacher, a special education teacher at the early childhood level, but also at the intermediate grade level and has it, had experience in the team, uh, team chairperson role and really has experience across all of the grade levels, which may, is very valuable, I think, for this particular role. And uh, for the past few years, she's been the early childhood director at the Boutwell Early Childhood Center. So um, I am so grateful that she is willing uh, to step into this role and take on the leadership of a very important set of responsibilities for Wilmington Public Schools, and I am completely confident, as are all of her colleagues and family members who are going to support her. They're here to support and say, it's okay, we're going to let mom come out and go to all those meetings that she's going to have to go to, so they're, they're here to endorse that. But uh, I would like to offer to the school committee my recommendation uh, that we appoint Mrs. Jennifer Mahan as the interim, this would be a one-year interim appointment, Director of Student Support Services, effective July 1st of 2016. And I'd just like to add that um, this is for the school committee. This is one of the three positions that um, by statute, state law, by statute, the school committee appoints at the recommendation of the superintendent so that people know that um, that's how the process works. Okay. So we would, um, I'm going to make the motion then if we have anything to talk about, we'll do that. Um, we'd have a recommended <coughs> motion that um, we move that the school committee accept the recommendation of the superintendent as outlined above and appoint Mrs. Jennifer E. Mahan as interim director of student support services, long title there, <laughs> for the period of one year, effective July 1st, 2016. Do we have that one? Mrs. Burns? Second. Do we have a second? Mrs. Bonish? Okay, does you, yeah, you were first. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, does anyone have anything they'd like to say? Are we all, all set? Um, all those in favor? Unanimous. You can all give your mom a hug and a kiss. <laughs> Would you like to say something? <laughs> if you're going to give me the opportunity. You can tell um, she's shy. <laughs> good. Wow. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. So I want to thank all of you and specifically um, Ms. Delay for your support and, um, and the opportunity to really um, do some great things for our students in uh, the Wilmington Public Schools. So thank you. I'm sure I'll be seeing lots of you. And mm -hmm. thank you to my colleagues for coming out in a show of support tonight. I'm grateful for all of that and the support that I have. So thank you. And these guys do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I think you did that so they'll know they never want to come to a meeting again. <laughs> they did say, they go, is this like when we, they were looking for the superintendent because there were cookies? I said, oh, there's, oh I said, there's no cookies tonight. You just have to sit. Next time you got to broker it with mom. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you. Well, you should be very proud of your mom, and we're so happy you came to see her receive her new job. We're very happy. <laughs>
and good news, you can leave now. <laughs> you don't have to stay. <laughs> Not that we want to send you out, but <laughs> they really can leave. <laughs> don't ask me twice, Mom. <laughs> they were wonderful. <laughs> That's great. All right. Uh, let me see. Too funny. Our next item of business, um, a joint statement on the later start time for the high school. Yes, and uh, so I actually should first thank our colleague in the Middlesex League, uh, Dr. Eric Conti, who is the superintendent, you know, in Burlington Public Schools. Uh, a lot of us are very passionate about the research that's been done with respect to school start time, not just high school, but I specifically am also concerned with middle school start, start time. And uh, Mr. Ruggiero is working diligently to assess what the transportation log and logistical impacts would be if we were to switch to a later start time for both the high school and middle school, have the elementary start earlier, kind of flip this model on its head almost, and, um, and to be able to also perhaps have some better alignment across town so that Shawsheen and Woburn Street staff can collaborate during professional development time and West and North can collaborate and the two early childhood centers. So we're investigating what kind of scenarios we could do. But in the meantime, uh, Dr. Conti has asked if we would all, as superintendents, sign on to this joint statement on later start times for high schools. Uh, you can see what he explains here is that uh, we would essentially be expressing that we would like to implement this by the start of the 2018-19 school year. So that's certainly enough few years in the future, and that we would commit that all Middlesex League districts would start sometime between 8 a.m. and 8.30 a.m., and that we would, would align uh, after-school competitions so that they would not miss academic time. And the, be the benefit of doing this as a Middlesex League is obviously we compete against one another, and that's mm -hmm. always been the obstacle to later start time is the impact on athletics and after-school activities. So um, certainly not... Uh, required to sign this letter, but I felt it was very important because this is a significant change, potentially, okay. for Wilmington Public Schools, that the school committee, we get the support of the school committee before I sign on to this letter and make sure that this is a direction that all members of the school committee are interested in supporting, again, based on the research that uh, that is out. Okay, Mrs. Burns. Um, I have to say, black and white, that I am 100 percent in support of, of the change. I know parents for years have been discussing that and the need and what research shows 100%. My concern is signing into something without seeing the financial aspect of the impact that this would cause um, and the opportunity for, and I, I think it's great, but I think the opportunity for a public forum that once we do have all the facts, um, I, I would like to hear the, if, I mean, I, I, have, I kind of suspect parents may want to just go with it regardless of the, the financial piece, but I, I would say sign in the sense that you support this, this right. piece, yes. um, but to, to title, That's, nothing, yes. okay. We're just signing because we felt that as a group of superintendents, if not everybody agreed, then this would never go forward. So if we yeah. all, if this so is this us is saying. this is a starting ground foundation exactly. to start the conversation. Right, and the plan okay. would be that starting in the fall, once the analysis and the scenarios have been completed, yeah. that we would hold a whole host of community forums okay. on changing school start times okay. across the district, what that could look like, mm -hmm. what the different options are, scenarios, okay. and and have a lot of opportunity for our parents and families and students to get engaged in this conversation. Right, I just and, want to be sure and that I this gives correctly. us <laughs> yes, this gives us a time. This doesn't commit us. Okay. But if, if we don't all sign on to it, then obviously it's not going to be successful. If we don't all sign on to attempt to accomplish this, then we'd be wasting our time. So well, this is it's just saying showing intent things. per se. Exactly. Very intent. good. Okay. Thank you very Correct. much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? No. Okay. Um, I'd entertain a motion to authorize Superintendent DeLay to sign the joint statement from the Middlesex League superintendents regarding later start times for high schools. So Mrs. moved. Mrs. Broussard. <laughs> Second. Mrs. Bonish. All those in favor? Unanimous, Kim. Thank you. Okay, I, thank I know you. that my colleagues will appreciate your support, as do I. Thank you. Okay. Our next item of business, school choice vote. 
As you know, this is an annual item that all school committees in Massachusetts are required to vote on, uh, whether they want to participate in the state school choice program or not participate. Historically, it's my understanding that Wilmington Public Schools has chosen not to participate due in large part to our own enrollment and class size challenges. And so the recommendation here is that once again, we choose not to participate for the 2016-17 school year. Okay. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Okay, I don't entertain a motion that the Wilmington School Committee vote to not participate in the state school choice program because of late lack of available space to accommodate out of town students. Mrs. So Zad. <laughs> Mrs. Carroll second. All those in favor? Unanimous, Kim. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along here, we have this, oh, I've lost it. Seam collaborative. <laughs> Quarterly report. Yes, as you know, uh, by statute, all collaboratives are supposed to submit to the school committees of their member districts a report, quarterly report, and we utilize uh, Kathy Lawson's executive director report from our prior meetings as our quarterly report. So uh, this is a report on the activities that are currently happening uh, at the SEAM Collaborative for this past quarter. It's really interesting. They're doing a retail also. It's everywhere. They are. They, <laughs> um, I mean, uh, Kathy Lawson does a fantastic job of assessing what the needs of the districts are and providing services for that fulfill those needs. Mm -hmm. So we definitely appreciate all her hard work. Does anyone have any questions or comments? No, nope, all set. Good, thank you. And um, our next item is the foundation budget res resolution. And I can certainly touch on it, but I know you, you and Mrs. Burns brought this to our attention through your work with uh, MASC and the Suburban Coalition. And essentially, as, as many of you know, uh, but for those in the, out in the community, in the audience, that uh, over the past 18 to 20 months or so, there has been a commission, uh, the, the Foundation Budget Review Commission, that has spent an awful lot of time evaluating whether or not the foundation budget is adequate to fund education in Massachusetts. Um, as you know, the definition of the foundation budget is the minimum amount necessary to provide an adequate education to the students in a district. I always feel that that's less than compelling uh, as a definition, but uh, even at that, the minimum adequate has been determined to be far less than adequate. And uh, the Suburban Coalition is asking school committees and uh, as well as boards of selectmen and finance committees to adopt this resolution to be sent to the legislature and the governor asking that there be full funding to support the recommendations of the foundation budget. Mm -hmm. uh, I did send this along to the town manager uh, and he's going to bring it before the board of selectmen and we mentioned it last night to the finance committee. We sent mm -hmm. along the resolution to uh, the chair of the finance committee as well and uh, they will I'm sure take this matter up at one of their future meetings. Right. And Dorothy Presser, who is our um, liaison, actually, with the Mass Association of School Committees, is keeping a list. So we have a list of um, the many communities, and many of them are doing it right now, the next two and three weeks, are signing on to this um, funding budget vote. Okay. Does anyone have any questions or comments about it? I just want, if you don't mind expanding a little bit with yep, regards to... Um, Governor Baker's re recent budget increase to the Chapter 70 funding, um, I believe it's 72.1 million. Um, it's really only a 1.6% increase over this year's budget uh, for education. And with a projected um, state revenue um, increase of uh, over 4% is what they're projecting, many educators feel that this is, 1.6 is certainly not enough. Um, and I think the, if I'm correct, and please correct me, if um, with the Foundation Budget Review Commission, um, I believe that when it's, uh, Ms. Delay said it was um, under uh, funded, they're talking of estimates up to $2 billion in being underfunded. So um, I'm not sure how accurate that is, but it's information I'm pulling off from our MAC counterparts, and I wanna make sure I interpret it correctly, but it is significant enough to, and I, I'm elated to see this, and I'm elated, uh, thank you for bringing it to um, uh, uh, Jeff Hall's attention uh, to put before the selectmen as well as the finance com committee, because 
It's right in line with the show of support that we need in order to put forth this, um, the findings of this commission is, is valuable. You can't ignore this any longer. And working with the 1993 foundation formula also probably contributes to the significant findings. So thank you. I, I'm sorry, a little passionate about it, so. <laughs> the resolution calling for the full funding here identifies um, right at the top two areas, employee health insurance and special education, Jen. <laughs> You're right in the forefront here. <laughs> Where the foundation budget significantly understates the true cost of educating students in the Commonwealth and has failed to keep pace with rising costs. And in <laughs> Wilmington, um, one of them was about $4 million. We're definitely underfunded in Wilmington in both those areas. So um, that actually helps add to our decision that we really need to be part of this and let, and, um, let the legislators know that this has to be worked on. It's, it's well past time. Absolutely. Yeah, to do that. So um, I'd entertain a motion that the Wilmington School Committee adopt the Suburban Coalition's resolution calling for full funding of the Foundation Budget Review Commission's recommendations. Mrs. Burns. So moved. Do we have a second? Mrs. Broussard. All right. Any questions or comments? All set. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous, Kim. I do have just on your way out, if you'd like to sign, I have an actual copy that has lines for signatures so that we can get your signatures here and not have to drag you back to the Roman house so we can get that in as soon as possible. Very good, thank you. Okay, our next item of business is public comment. Welcome. Hi, I'm David Ragsdale, I have uh, two comments I wanted to make. Uh, the first is that I was uh, happy that uh, we're considering a later start time for schools, and I wanted to state my support of that. And uh, in addition to the high school, I'm glad that the uh, superintendent also indicated that we're looking at the middle school, uh, since that is currently our I believe, earliest starting earliest starting school. Even though there's a financial cost associated with it naturally, uh, there's already a cost that the research really indicates that we're already paying, and I think that it's important for us to bear that in mind. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, I have so far had uh, two daughters who have gone through the Boutwell uh, under the care of Jen Mahan, and uh, I wanted to express my appreciation for uh, everything that she's done at that school for, uh, for the last several years. Uh, they, you know, we hope there's an orientation at the beginning of the uh, school year when all the parents go and they have to see exactly how everything's going to work, and you, you learn a lot about the details, but the most important thing that you hear at that is, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You can send your child to kindergarten. You can put them on the bus, and they're going to be okay. And so I went through that you know, with, my, with my first daughter, and then two years later, I had another one come up, and I went to the exact same orientation, and amazingly, I found myself feeling just as good and just as relieved. Oh, it's still going to be okay. It's all it's going to be all right. And uh, so I strongly support her for this position, and uh, the only regret I have is that my third daughter will not be able to have her as director of the Batwell. Uh, when she starts there in two years, uh, but, <laughs> but I, know, I know it's still going to be okay. And, uh, so I wanted to express my appreciation and also my support of uh, her in this new role. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That was very nice. Thank you. Okay. Um, other reports. I can put this in one sad. one last plug for for WEF. They're Ooh. still looking for teams for the spelling bee. It's fun. Please join us Thursday, March 24th. It's coming up soon, but you still have time to put your team in. You can do it online now. They accept <laughs> PayPal, checks, cash, whatever maybe. Fun night. I do have a question regarding that. Yes. For those who have participated in years past, what's the best way of preparing? Because I somehow got into it. So. There's um, going to be a pair. Yeah. You're going to get a um, study, study, guide. study guide. Yes. So when you sign up, you should yeah. get a study guide, right? Okay. Who Julie, that was the last meeting. We haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> <laughs> because I haven't been given the rules yet. Uh, They're <laughs> updating the rules, okay. and I will be sending those out. As Wonderful. As, as, I was told you had to read the dictionary. Guide. Cover to <laughs> cover. <laughs> and <Just> study. <laughs> Your team is <laughs> putting you on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better be studying. <laughs> the pressure's on for that team <laughs> with, with the superintendent oh, on it. 
Yeah, you guys better yeah. carry us through. <laughs> Looking just for the guidance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, do we have any correspondence, Rishi? Mrs. Brissett, nope, any correspondence? No, no correspondence. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Um, future meeting dates and agenda items. I, I will just mention that we went to the Finance Committee um, last night. So um, everybody made it um, just about, and um, it was, went longer than we thought, actually, but it was excellent because of a lot of good questions and it um, worked very nicely. And they, just as a side, they will be voting on March 16th, is my understanding. Not that they, they're, I don't think historically anybody attends that, oh, they right. vote, but they, they will be voting on the 16th. Okay, thank you. Um, so our next two meetings will be March 23rd and then April 13th. We are fast approaching the end of the school year. <laughs> All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mrs. Bonish. So moved. Second, Mrs. Burns. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you all for coming tonight. We appreciate it. And your support of each other is really nice, very nice to see.